So we are increasingly seeing patients with severe TR that are symptomatic that are, are, don't have good options. You know, surgery is very morbid. Uh, medical therapy is often ineffective. So there's unmet need of trying to find a therapy that works for these patient population. Um, and we, you know, last year there was the Triluminate study with the edge to edge repair. And this is the first trial looking at transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement to treat symptomatic severe TR in patients who are felt to be at high risk or inoperable for surgery. These were all patients that were seen by the local heart team. They were felt to be optimally managed on medications for their severe TR but remained symptomatic and were felt to be uh, not high risk surgical candidates. So these patients were then randomized uh, two to one uh, to either get transcatheter replacement with the Edwards Evoke system or continued optimal medical therapy. And we followed these patients. Uh, the primary endpoint of the trial is a one-year endpoint. There were a total of 400 patients, uh, 267 in the evoke arm and the remainder in the control arm. For first important, in discussing the findings, first thing is procedural results, right? We were able to successfully deploy the valve in over 95% of patients. Um, the procedure times, the device time was under 60 minutes. Uh, patients in general went home, 93% went home. Median length of hospital stay was three days and all, all procedures were done from a femoral venous approach percutaneously. In terms of the 30-day results, there was about a 3% cardiovascular mortality. There was a 1.2% conversion to surgery, which was three patients, and those were mainly due to RV wire perforations. Um, and other safety events, importantly, were there was about a 10% rate of severe bleeding. Now, not all of that was access rela uh, related, probably about half of it was some of the comorbid conditions in these patients. They're prone to bleeding. They're all, a lot of them are coagulopathic at baseline. So there were other bleeding events beyond uh, vascular uh, issues. Uh, and then the other big safety event that we looked at is the requirement for new pacemaker. Uh, and that was about 24% in patients that didn't have a prior pacemaker. So uh, and that, that was another important safety signal. So then between 30 days and one year, the safety events were comparable between the two groups. So there's an early safety hit with uh, transcatheter replacement, but after 30 days, we didn't see any other safety events. So then when we look at the one-year endpoint, the primary endpoint was a higher core composite of both clinical, uh, including mortality, uh, RV, R RVAD, and tricuspid valve intervention, uh, as well as functional uh, quality of uh, life changes. And there was a hierarchical composite endpoint. Uh, the significance was calculated using Finkelstein Schoenfeld, and it was highly significant benefiting transcatheter therapy with Evoke. To sort of look at the magnitude of the effect, we calculated a win ratio, um, which was uh, highly significant with a win ratio of 2.02. .02. Now, most of that win ratio was driven by KCCQ improvements, NYHA class improvements, and all cause mortality improvements. And then when we look at sort of all, obviously everyone looking at are there changes in mortality, and we look at the Kaplan-Meier curves for all-cause mortality, they numerically favored Evoke at one year, but there, were, there was no statistical difference. And we, we also did a landmark analysis, you know, because there's the safety event, and so if you look at 30 days to one year, you see these curves start to separate around six to eight months. Uh, and again, numerically favoring Evoke, but not reaching significance. Heart failure hospitalization similar, um, not numerically favors, but not significant in the in the group. Where we really saw the benefit was in uh, functional status and quality of life improvements. And Suzanne Arnold has sort of presented is presenting the data, looking at KCCQ changes, and there were, there was a pretty uh, significant benefit of almost 20 points in patients that got transcatheter therapy with Evoke in terms of KCCQ improvement compared to those that were on control. The patient population is sort of a mix, and I think it's important for us to understand that there's a, the, the, the population of patients getting treatment is really quite varied. There's from atrial functional to TR to ventricular functional to pacemaker leads. What's interesting is 40% of the patients that involved in this study had a pre-existing pacemaker. So these are patients that, and so that's an important component, that those are a lot of patients that don't get edge to edge, so I think that, that was important. I also think we're early in this in this journey on tricuspid therapy, and we, we start looking at subgroups, and we look for interaction, and not powered. But what was sort of interesting is uh, patients that had massive or torrential TR, so patients that had wor worse TR got greater benefit. Patients that had better RV function got greater benefit. Patients that were had a greater six-minute walk at baseline got more benefit. So there are subgroups that are going to benefit, and maybe some of these benefits are going to actually translate to mortality benefits. And I think b before we say there's there's clearly not a mortality benefit, I think we need to understand this. It's a very heterogeneous population, and we, we there may be patient groups that benefit, and that that was sort of interesting. And so as we start looking more into this data, we we need to. Con 
conduct more studies, better understand who's going to benefit, and I, I think we, we will better identify which patients are, are, are need to be treated and are going to get the greatest bang for their buck. I mean, I think this is the first trial of replacement. Um, we need to understand, you know, there's, there's a whole host of other devices that interact with the annuals differently that may have, uh, that, you know, we need to get the pacemaker rate down, right? We can't have a 24% pacemaker rate. And so whether that's a, uh, screening patients, whether it's, it's likely device iteration, procedural technique, all those things, I think we need to figure that out. A anticoagulation is, is an issue. All these patients had to be on anticoagulation because you get leaflet thrombosis and thickening. And we've seen that from the surgical side as well. Now, is that lifelong? We need to understand that. Uh, are there valve designs that can reduce that risk? Because, you know, anti anticoagulation comes with a price, and right now we need to anticoagulate. So that's an another area of interest. And obviously we need to continue to reduce procedural complications, and that, that's going to come from device iteration, things getting smaller. We also need to better understand how to image. You know, we had a couple, we had 5% that couldn't get the procedure. The majority of those were due to imaging challenges, and so, we, you know, if we can sort of help sort through that, we can figure out, you know, maybe find a larger portion of patients that can be treated. And right now, this is a select population. We need to continue to figure out how we expand the population that can get treatment.